Hello and welcome to Match 4 with Midnight God and Popper. We'll be on the play and hopefully we'll pull out a win with this deck. Uh, yeah, the sand is great. Um, we'll keep it. Uh, turn 1, I'm gonna, just going to play a Soul Sister and then Colony Garden. I think I've done that several times. <laughs> That's often my turn 1 with this deck. And it's one of the better ones, to be honest. But hopefully we're in a good matchup here. Um, so, also, just something that... I do personally. I always play the soul attendant first because I find it annoying that it's a May and that I have to go through two triggers. Uh, to uh, I have to say yes to gaining the life. Uh, so I I always play that one first because I would prefer that if it died, it was that if a soul sister for to die, it would be that one. But unfortunately, we're playing against hexproof, so game one this is going to be rough. Uh, so we drew Presence of God, which is not ideal, but not the worst. I would have actually liked a land that came in untapped there so I could block uh, with veteran armor and all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, so we're going to gain some life. We're up to 24. I don't know that it'll help, uh, but we're going to attack for one. Hoping they block. And hoping that they don't just play a, a ledge walker. And at the beginning of their next turn. So, I don't know what's taking so Like, I have this deck as well. I'll probably be playing it at some point. But, uh... Not blocking there seems like a no-brainer for them. But I'm trying to bait them into it anyway. So, probably a Rancor coming down right now. Or a Utopia Sprawl. Yep. Utopia Sprawl is for our opponent. So, that resolves. That's fine. Gleeful Sabotage is coming in right now. as all four of them. I can say that with absolute certainty. Ethereal Armor on the Glade cover. And a slippery boggle. <laughs> and our opponent just passes. Which I'm okay with. So I'm going to play the armor, make some, gain some life, and just pass and hope and pray that our dude doesn't die. Or that their dude dies somehow. Like they make a mistake, maybe. <laughs> uh. And hope that their dude stays small enough that we can triple block and our stuff lives. Or pray that uh, not unflinching courage, armadillo cloak doesn't come down. Even rancor would be bad. Because we can just chump with the plant and everything will be hunky dory. Uh, so they're gonna gain a life. They're at 20. So our attack did do something, kinda. Oh, yeah. So this is the ledge walker I was talking about earlier, if you don't know what this does. It's essentially unblockable in this, against us at the very least. Uh, so they have a 4-4. Four, four. Chances are they attack with it, I would. They don't. They elect to just pass the turn. Which I'm totally okay with. Uh, blossoming Sands for us, which is good. And then hopefully we draw the Midnight Guard. Yes, please, maybe. Um, my plan right now is just to scatter the seeds when they attack. Hope that whatever they attack us with doesn't have trample. <laughs> and so I can just chump for days. Heliod's Pilgrim for our opponents. Probably going to get Rancor. They don't have any floating mana. I I anticipate some sort of trample granting uh, enchantment. The reason I keep bringing up trample is just because we're a token deck, so we can block forever. But if our opponent's creatures can go over our chumps, because we have perpetual chumps against this deck, then we're in trouble. Armadillo Cloak for our opponents. Can't cast it this turn. But they do have an army of creatures. Any attacks? Alright, so we're going to sprout, uh, scatter the seeds. 
get six triggers. Put them all on the stack. So this is uh all right, there we go. God's willing. It's a card, it's a card with text. Um not what I wanted. It's what we got though. So I think we just pass. The reason I say that is because I'd rather we're not in a position where presence of God on any of these dudes is necessary per se. Especially since their Lady Cover Scout is gonna get trample. Um plus I'd rather just hold out for the combo. We're at forty one. They do have a seven seven first strike trample hexproof. But we do have twenty one extra life points to play with. So they'll attack. We're not going to block. No, I would not like to declare blockers. You gain your life. That is the unfortunate part about Armadillo Cloak. Pallid Microdurn number three. This is part of why I side them out. So we're just going to pass again and hope to draw another white card that costs one less and is a also has two power coincidentally but has three toughness instead. Um So let's just hope that they didn't draw an uh, armadillo cloak number 2. Seems good. Yep. Check in for 12. Maybe block, give protection, and scry. I think I'll do that. This deck doesn't really have any removal. Except for Journey to Nowhere, maybe. Give it pro green. It's not what we want. I mean, it's good. But I don't want it. Let's yield those forever. Okay, perfect. So let's this again. Let's just hope and pray they don't know what this is. Like the first time I played against this deck, I had no idea what Midnight Gaunt even was. I I took this list from the person I played against because I thought it was so cool. Um. So let's just hope that this guy's in the same boat that we were or that I was uh, several weeks ago, and hope that this is that nothing comes of this. Uh, that he doesn't make us fuss about the Midnight Guard at all. So do we block? I don't think we do. I think we just take it and go to 15. Alright, so let's suit him up. See what happens. They don't have any instant speed removal. And we got there. So I'm just going to show him how this is going to work. Perhaps he'll do us a favor and concede. He might make us do it for the sake of time. There was uh, the actual game, too, that I recorded got lost. Um, the file was corrupted. Uh, but I played against Peregrine Drake. For those of you who don't know, it's a combo where you blink Peregrine Drake over and over, and that card is a 2-3 with flying, that when it enters the battlefield, you untap five lands, and it costs five. And basically, this deck was playing it with the Tron lands and um, it's similar to eggs in that sometimes they'll go off and they won't kill you. And there's an argument that I've seen where do you just let the combo player win once you see that they've established the combo or do you make them go through it? Fortunately for us, our opponent decided to concede, but I made the argument in that uh, video suggesting that you should let your opponent go through it, and I'll go more into that once we get back in the game, but for now we're in the sideboard, so we're going to side in the standard bearer and the four gleeful sabotage. The standard bearer because, as opposed to last game where it was bad, um... 
and the witches just annihilated it without it just killed my soul sister without even looking at the bearer for some odd reason which i still don't know if somebody can explain to me how that works i would be grateful um it's great here because all their enchantments have to go onto the bearers uh so i think we leave we take out the microderm because they were so bad maybe we leave one take out a scatter the seeds these are generally the two cards i take out first because they're so expensive uh, maybe cut one veteran armorer and cut the spider silk armor. Run it back like that. We are up a game, so we're in an okay position to have to go back and re-sideboard. I think it'll be fine. Like, well, it's just basically what changes is the cards we took out. Um, this hand actually looks okay. It's slow, but it looks okay. I'm... <sighs> Because of the speed, oh, we are on the draw. This is going to be hard. If we don't draw Standard Bearer on time, this could be bad. I'm going to keep it anyway, since we're up a game. Possibly felled by my hubris, but... <sighs> I just hope that they have an equally so st slow start. Or we draw Gleeful Sabotage. So let's get let's see if we can't get some green creatures out on the battlefield and start nuking stuff that they play. <clears throat> so this is actually good. They played a ledge walker, which I mean sucks because we can't block it. But that's not like a three three or a it's not a it's not a three one because of a rancor right now and we did we only took one so. I would rather them play more creatures than play enchantments right now. So with our turn, we're going to play Soul Warden and play the Sanctuary, bouncing our sands. And then we're just going to pass. And then next turn, um, next turn I'm just going to play the Armor, I think, depending on the draw, naturally. But I think I'm just going to play the Armor and hope to live i guess <laughs> no there's not much more i could do than that hope oh, maybe get some green creatures so that way i can conspire with gleeful sabotage so three lands for our opponent and they're just gonna poke us for one. Oh, maybe that should have been taken out <laughs> that seems bad uh <laughs> maybe we'll win despite it but <laughs> Yeah, that seems like a card I should not have in uh, a deck versus Hexproof. And I also screwed up because I should have played the uh, armor and then attacked into the Boggle. I'm just full of misplays today. I don't know that that'll cost us the game because they have the better Hexproof creature, but it certainly sucks. They have their White Source online, which is possibly what's been bottlenecking them this entire time. So they might finally get back in. They might actually be ready to play some magic. We're at 20. Draw. God's willing. Alright, well, we're going to attack. And not be bad at this. Um, so, no blocks. They go to 18. Yeah, I think we just pass. Uh, there's not really a lot we can do. If only this was target creature anybody controlled. That'd be bananas. Um, well, actually, not in this matchup. Journey to Nowhere. You dumb card. That's good. Oh. Shut up. Journey to Nowhere is a great card. It's good in everything. I'm so glad I left it in. It was the right choice. I knew this was going to happen. Don't judge me. Uh, actually, I should have known this was going to happen, because this looks like a, the same list that I have, if not just barely different. Well, now we have an interesting conundrum. Do we play our... I think we do play our standard bearer, and here's why. Because they have to choose at least one flag bearer on the battlefield. They have to target 
either theirs or their own. And if they target their own, we can journey to nowhere it and make all their enchantments fall off. So I'm just going to play ours and laugh at them. Because our creatures are better than theirs. <laughs> our opponent sent us a message. <laughs> Oops, didn't mean to make that huge. But glad our opponent is being a good sport about it. Uh, I will send it one back just, just to be fun. Do it on the side, though. It's not important to the commentary of the match. Um, I apologize of how glitchy everything is on my computer while I'm recording. It's actually normally not like this. I think it's is all to do with my recording software. Uh, once I find some better software, um, I'm sure this won't be an issue anymore. Uh, but we're going to take three, and they're going to go to 19. Not super worried about it. Because of this Journey to Nowhere, which is a good card to keep in against Hexproof. So you guys all suck for downing me. Let's tap the Sanctuary and be good at this game. Journey to Nowhere, target Flag Bearer. As I don't have any other choice. So the Flag Bearer really brought it on itself. So we're going to attack with just the 2-2. If they double block, I'm totally fine with that. Um... Utopia Sprawl for our opponent. That's not really an enchantment I'm a, I, I care about. They have another white source. Um, <laughs> another standard bearer for our opponent. Sure. But we're going to gain a life. So maybe I'll draw Journey to Nowhere number two. <laughs> oh, this match is silly. Uh, yeah, Ethereal Armor is fine. Oh, God. Opponent's probably going to go attacking. Yeah. Attack for one. Sure. Depending on what they do to their standard bearer next turn, um, I'm tempted to just leave up the armorer and block, and then God's willing, pro-white. Presence of God, huh? So, we have three of them. We also have a Pallid Microderm. I think I'm going to play the Microderm. Because Microderm blocks really well. So does, so does their Flag Bearer that's untapped. So I am just going to pass. Um, I do have a Gleeful Sabotage in my hand. So I can destroy these two Ethereal Armors. But I need more green creatures. So it's the war of the flag bearers right now. Three ethereal armors. Holy shit. All right. Pardon my French, but that is a lot of first strike. That is a big, big fat dude. I don't see why you wouldn't attack. I'm going to throw somebody under the bus. Soul Warden, you're doing nothing. Uh, well, do I throw the armor, or do I throw the... I think I throw the armor, actually, even though the armor does more damage in the long run. Uh, the Soul Warden keeps us alive. So, armor down. This whole match is gross. I, I'm sorry, it's just disgustingly gross. It's fun, though. It's, it, it's, it's fun. Uh, so we took one. We jumped like a champion. Uh, we get a spore counter on our pallid microderm. Hey, she's back. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's time to presence of Gond. Um, just to get some green creatures on the board. Plus we have additional presences. And if you're wondering why I'm not playing the soul warden, it's so I can hold up God's willing so I can block this monster. 
Holy crap. Uh, I've, n I've never seen that happen before, to be honest. Uh, even playing Hexproof myself. So... <laughs> <laughs> we have to target a flag bearer, I think. Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, so let's move to declare blockers. That guy. Yeah. Oops. Declare blockers. Make a 1-1, one, one, just in case there's shenanigans. I don't think there will be anything that happens. I don't know that anything will come of this. So let's make it pro the white, the right color. That can go straight to the bottom. So we take one. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, no kidding, opponent. Uh, no kidding. So... Uh, this guy's, this guy's fun. Alright, so we're gonna play our Blossoming Sands. We can Gleeful Sabotage now, and I think we will. <sighs> so bad. Um, so let's create, uh, an elf. Cast with Conspire, target... Target. I'm considering this just to see if I can slow them down a little bit more color-wise, but they have no cards in their hand, so there's no point. So tap these two. Conspire trigger on the stack. Happens. Uh, oh, crap, I selected the same target. Oh, shucks. Well, I don't know that it'll be the end of us, but... It's... It's definitely unfortunate. Uh, I did not want to do that. I would have rather got rid of that stupid Utopia Sprawl. But, well, it is what it is. Misclicks happen. That's the problem with Moto. Um, I don't like the way they do multiple spells on the stack. Like, I don't like the way they do Grape Shot or Valakut, where they can just click same target over and over. I wish there was an option where you could click same target or different target and then select the new target. But... I'm not going to blame Moto for losing this game. Um, that one was on me. I should have paid attention. So they attack. Uh, Soul Warden is going to block, but we are going to God's Willing. Doesn't work. I'm dumb. Because of Flag Bearers. It's okay. We didn't want to take seven anyway. Or take eight in total. And we have another one. So this this whole game has just been a series of shenanigans and misclicks because normally all of these would be on spread across all these hexproof creatures, but we have two standard bears looking at each other, kind of going, "Do something." Uh, so so this game is just silly. Um, uh, I think we just pass, and then during their turn we'll make a fungus or we'll make a. a a dude off of the microderm. Let him go attacking. I mean, they don't have trample. We might as well start throwing elves underneath him. Elf going down. Elf under the bus. Remove three time counters, make a sapperling. Maybe maybe we're just gonna be on the sapperling uh pallid microderm plan. <laughs> just we have to wait three turns to generate a creature. Uh so we drew Sprout Swarm, which is fantabulous. Because we get to gain a life every single time we do it, and it synergizes well with the pallid microderm. Because we get to pump all of these sapperlings. So I guess we have a way to win now. Just in this series of mistakes and misclicks and bad magic playing on my part. So, make an elf warrior token. And you know what the worst part is? Uh, Midnight Guard isn't even good anymore because of their flag bearer. Very talkative opponent today. Uh, 
So we'll throw the elf under the bus and let them poke me to death or attempt to. But before uh, before we go to damage, I am going to get some value out of this elf. Because that's all this seems to be about anymore. So we'll make a dude. Make some dudes. Uh, say go. I wish my chat bubble would stop glitching so I could move it over to my other monitor, but we can't all have what we want. Uh, I'll play the Evangel, I suppose, and I might... <laughs> I was gonna say I might as well throw the Gond on there, but stupid flag bearers! <laughs> Opponent says he has ten different top decks, top decks so... I don't... If if he doesn't get there, he doesn't get <laughs> And he drew another scout. Uh, if he gets there, he gets there. I mean, our tra our what we are doing is significantly slower than what he's doing, and he's effectively poking us for two every turn, even though we're gaining the life back. So we'll make an elf warrior token. We'll do what we did last turn. And we're in a similar situation that we were in to match two, where we definitely have a chance to win, but it's really slow. And our opponent really needs, like, one thing to, to finish us off. Um, so, hopefully we can be faster than they can draw something that grants trample. Hopefully we, actually, hopefully we just draw Gleeful Sabotage and giggle at them when they play whatever trample threat they have. Because they have no cards in hand. So, our, our hopeful draws are, like, good creatures. Like, any, any of our good creatures that are not <laughs> what we have, and, uh, Gleeful Sabotage. That's, that's all we can ask for out of this, whatever this is. So, I'm actually gonna go attacking now. I'm gonna attack with the two Elf Warriors and the Evangel. Probably could have attacked with a microderm as well. But I want to get a little bit more aggressive. Made that mistake last time, and I don't plan to make it this time. Uh, perhaps I was just too slow on getting aggressive. We'll see what our opponent plays. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of the problem with Hexproof in Popper. Not so much in Modern, because they I think they run fewer creatures. But in Popper, you can just flood out on all your stupid little 1-1s one that can't be targeted, and then nothing happens. So, Tax of the Ledge Walker is fine. I don't care. Uh, you can hit me for two. I'm going to gain a bunch more life. Uh, let's buy back some stuff. See, this is the, the point where... that I've talked about in the past, where we just are making so many saplings that it's fueling... Our buybacks even more like if we were able to make one more if we w one more turn we would have been able to make an additional sapling see we just gained a bunch of life they did nothing it's that's the thing about sprout swarm it's so uh, it's kind of like bitter blossom is once you get it going it's inevitable obviously it's not the same as bitter blossom because bitter blossom is significantly better but all right hold on so let's say we attack with the Microderm, just the Microderm. He'll block with the 7-7. Seven, seven. We can pump Microderm 9 times. We can pump Microderm 9, 10, 11, 12. Maybe 13 more times. Like, up to 13. Put him to... I think we could kill him this turn. It'll depend on how they block the Microderm. It, I'm gonna try... I don't, I'm not sure the math is, is going to work. It depends solely on how they block. Um, well, the problem is if we give it pro white. All right, we can kill the bearer. That's kind of, actually, I think that's all I'm going to go for is I'm just going to try to kill the standard bearer. I don't even need to waste the gods willing if I do it that way. So, let's see what happens if they don't block. 
then I'm going to have to break into some math. So they did block. We're going to try to kill that thing. Alright, so let's create a 1-1. One, one. The reason I'm creating the... The 1-1 one, one is kind of irrelevant, but... Alright, so we gotta pump him up seven times. So, alright, so let's... So now that we've done that, let's sacrifice some saverlings just to get an idea of where we're at. Six. Seven. Alright, and then we'll leave it like that. We don't need to pump any more. We can just pass the turn. So, now they have just a bunch of idiots, and maybe they drew the trample threat this turn, but we totally housed them right there. That was a bad block on their part. There was not a lot they could do about that. Uh, so, now, we could actually have the kill. Alright, now I have to break into math again. Um, so, let's, while I'm thinking about the, while I'm trying to figure out how this is going to work, I'm just going to start making saplings because we don't have time to dirtle around and do nothing and think about things so because I was gonna make the saplings regardless so might as well just get it out of the way alright so how many saplings do we have? nine? We can deal 11 damage right now. So, I think... Alright, we can get there. So, let's... God's willing. I think we can get there. Pro green. Put that on the bottom. We don't need it. Uh, remove three spore counters. Alright, we're going to go to attack. And then we'll go from there. Alright, so attacking happens. Make a 1-1. One, one. Like, I could just tap this with uh, Convoke, but I gain a life if I do it this way. If In case you were wondering why I was doing it the way I was. Uh, so we'll make a 1-1. One, one. Alright, let's start sacking creatures. Just to see if we can figure out the math. Uh, I did sack an untapped one, which was a mistake, but I don't think it'll matter. Make sure I leave something untapped. All right, so we have to do this quick. Make sure we're always yielding to this, so that way we have as much time to get through this as humanly possible. So I'm just going to try to pump through it. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tough sell. We might have done some. We might have made some mistake. That's gonna put us just shy. But we're gonna try as hard as we can. Um. So we're at nine. We can generate. Okay. No, we're good. We got there. We're good. I think we made it. And in, in, in hindsight, we could have attacked with all these. Actually, no, we couldn't have. Um, because then we wouldn't have been able to make more. And the only reason I'm making more is just for the sake of making sure that I get there. So this is another game where we <laughs> went to time. Because our deck does nothing, but it's good at keeping us alive. <laughs> So, thank you guys for watching and staying with me the entire time, if you have. This is probably going to be another 50-minute video like the other one was. Uh, maybe our opponent will concede, and we won't have to sit here forever and wait for him to let this trigger resolve. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching and uh, listening to me ramble on about 
he, irrelevant things in Magic. Um, and complain about Moto and watch my screen glitch out. Uh, next week, so I've I've been brewing a little bit, and I've created a new modern deck, and I'm gonna start posting posting a new segment of videos. Um, or at least a new type. It's going to be similar. If you guys watch MTG Goldfish at all, it's going to be similar to Against the Odds uh, that Saffron Olive Doves. Uh, love that channel, by the way. Uh, I watch it all the time. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be kind of similar to that, but they aren't going to be budget decks. S uh, Saffron Olive, or Seth, at MTG Goldfish, he makes a point to make his decks all under 100 bucks. Mine's going to be different in that I'm going to be running fetches and shocks and good cards that are more expensive. The decks aren't going to be tier one, but they're going to be running, you know, cards that would be seen in typically tier one decks. Um, that's going to be my my fundamental difference. Uh, and we uh, we won there. We were able to get there with the Pallid Microderm and the God's Willing. But uh, as, as often as I side Pallid Microderm out... It did some work there, so uh, thank you, opponent, for being so cool about it and so well, not necessarily cool about it, but he was talkative and he wasn't like bitchy. I'm glad he had fun again. I, I'm try I try to keep the language down for this, but sometimes I can't help it. Uh, anyway, just further announcement. Um, yeah, it's gonna be somewhat similar to Against the Odds, but. Fundamental difference being that the price isn't really going to have an impact so much on what I play. It's just going to be fun brews that are out there. Uh, I will start looking into doing sk standard gameplay. The problem I have with standard is obviously the, just the cost on MTGO. Um, but I am looking into it. So look forward to this random brew garbage that I've made next week. Thank you for joining me for match four of Midnight Gone and Popper. Uh, I apologize for the length of these videos. Uh, thank you, and have a good night.